Call to order the February 26th regular business meeting of City Council. Mr. Hamp, can you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> I see that we have some visitors in the back tonight. Uh, scout Troop 84 from Stewart's Draft. Do we have a Scout Master or something would like to come up and just introduce your? My name is Ken Baisley. I'm a Troop Committee member with uh, Troop 84 at Stewart's Draft. We're here for our uh, citizenship in the community merit badge. We attend a, uh, a council meeting or uh, board supervisors meeting, so we chose to come to your city council meeting here tonight. All right, welcome. Thank Glad you. you're all here tonight. Thank you. I remind those in attendance, if you wish to speak during citizens' comment period, <clears throat> there's a sign-up sheet in the back of the room. Item two is uh, consideration of the consent agenda. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to uh, um, uh, ask that we uh, withdraw item 2C uh, related to the uh, general registrar's office relocation. All right, we have a motion to withdraw. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. Is there any other discussion? And under other discussion, we're pulling it off. Uh, we're going to have to work on this down the road when we have more time, so it will die tonight, hopefully, with the vote here. So having said that, any other discussion? If not, all in favor of uh, withdrawing it, say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries by a vote. Thank you. Now, is there a motion to adopt the consent agenda as presented without item C? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Friedman. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Marks. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries 5 0. Do council members have anything they wish to present tonight? Mr. Freeman. I'd just like to remind everyone that next Monday, the 5th, I'll have my discussion with anybody who wants to talk, chat, have uh, discussion, questions or whatnot. So uh, eight to nine at Panera Bread in the morning and seven to eight at the library. So feel free to come by and talk. Thank you, Mr. Freeman. Anybody else? The Saul um, Citizen Action Network hosted a table talk last Saturday. Um, is this a great place to um, just talk about social change and diversity? Um, and we had a great conversation. Um, Vice Mayor uh, Short was there as well, and I think it went really well. Yeah, it was. Great and, discussion. Um, it, the table talk happens at 10 a.m., second and fourth Saturday at the Waynesboro Public Library. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. Item four is to receive a presentation of the 2018 City of Waynesboro draft comprehensive plan for Mr. Charles Buki. Mr. Shaw. Mr. Mayor, members of council, as noted, tonight you'll receive a presentation of the city's uh, most recently drafted comprehensive plan from Mr. Buki. I have a few introductory remarks and I'd like to provide some recognition for some folks that worked on the plan. The comprehensive plan is a document designed to guide the future development of the city and is supposed to provide a firm foundation for policy and action to promote a more future or certain future in the community. In essence, the plan is supposed to prompt us to imagine what the city should be like, can be like, what we aspire for the city to be like in five or 10 or 20 years and help us understand uh, whether we're on track to proceed towards that preferred future and give us some guidance as to how to either stay on track or change course as necessary. The Code of Virginia requires localities to adopt a comprehensive plan and to review the plan every five years to consider its revision. As well, we find that many agencies who provide us funding require that we adopt uh, specific measures in comprehensive plans in order to receive that funding. In 2017, the City Council provided funding to revise the comprehensive plan, and in January of 2017, the, we selected CZB of Alexandria to help us do that. 
Shortly thereafter, we assembled a steering committee that was comprised of a, a good cross segment of citizens in the community and began to do both analysis of the community and as well hold a series of various types of public meetings. I'd like to recognize the steering committee. Uh, it's a fairly lengthy list. Elzina Anderson and uh, Terry Short represented the city council. Stephen Airy and Shannon Boyle represented the planning commission. Diana Williams represented the school board. As citizens, Doug Davis, Miguel Use, Melinda Ferguson, Bob Harris, Sam Hostetter, Kathy Johnson, Mary Kane, Andrew Kelly, Danny Ledford, Noel Owen, Stacy Strawn, Dave Wolf, and Sue Wright represented the city. We also assembled a technical advisory committee of professional staff members to, to oversee the project. Those members included Luke Jude, the director of planning, Dwayne Jones, director of parks and recreation, city engineer Todd Wood, public works director Brian McReynolds, chief of police Michael Wilhelm, the building official Joe Hanberrier, the zoning official Laura Martin, Greg <coughs> Hitchin, economic development director, and myself. Over the course of the year, the plan was developed, a draft was provided to the Planning Commission in the fall, and in its most recent uh, meeting just a week ago, the Planning Commission uh, recommended to, uh, or adopted a recommendation to the Council to adopt the plan. Tonight, you will receive information, uh, but we will schedule a public hearing in the near future to receive the recommendation of the Planning Commission and to hear public comment for the Council. I think over the last uh, the course of the last year, we had a lot of uh, meaningful, honest conversations, sometimes tough conversations. Sometimes we examined things that were uncomfortable to us. Our consultants pushed us and we pushed back. And at the end of the day, I think we came up with a plan that provides a great deal of insight uh, as to a potential future for our com community. Comprehensive plans are a guide, they're not regulation. <coughs> but having said that, I would ask that you review the primary thoughts and, and guidance of this plan. And if they don't ring true to you, if you look at them and say that those are not things that you can support, then I think you need to tell us that. Because otherwise, as we move forward, I think that the staff is gonna rely on this plan and many people in the community or who have a vested interest will rely on the plan. And if, uh, if you feel like those are things that you can't abide, then I think we should know that and we should revise the, the plan to your liking. The plan calls for action and investments in schools and public safety and neighborhoods and parks. And I think there are going to be tough choices to be made. We won't complete a, a, the accomplishment of a plan like this overnight, but in the long run, the test of the plan and the value of the plan is only in its execution. And so, again, I, I would implore upon you to, uh, to consider the plan as you um, adopt it as your plan and a plan for the, the citizens that you represent. It has been said that by far the greatest and most admirable form of wisdom is that needed to plan and beautify cities and human communities. Actually, Socrates, the Greek philosopher, said that about 300 BC, and he was a pretty smart fellow. And so I, I feel like this is a weighty task for us, but I feel as well that as a group and as a community, we're certainly up to the task. And with that, I would ask that Mr. Buki provide his presentation. Thanks, Jim, Mayor, Council. <clears throat> Thank you for asking me to join you today. Um, I, I wanna uh, just give a few brief remarks before going through the slides. The slides are just a <coughs> dozen and a half. We'll go through them pretty quickly and open it up for questions if you have any. Um, I, I think some congratulations are in order uh, but just to be here tonight. Uh, it's a, it's a year-long process. It takes a, it takes a while. It takes a pound of everybody's flesh. Um, and <clears throat> what you've got is a draft document that is, in my opinion, uh, quite, it's a fairly remarkable document. Um, 
some context I think is useful to uh, uh, validate you know, its remarkable qualities. The planning profession of which I'm a member, the planning profession's formative years was in the early 1960s. It's important context. The profession grew up with, a, with a, an assumption, a baked in assumption, that growth would be something that every community could assume. Growth in population, expansion of the economy. And when you have those, those uh, assumptions built into planning processes, the work of planning, even the art of planning, it's difficult, but it's not particularly stressful because you can assume population growth and economic expansion and revenue sufficient to tackle the challenges a community is gonna have, okay? That's a luxury that many communities in the United States don't have today. And so when we partnered with the city of Waynesboro about a year ago, one of the realities we confronted right away were, were uh, demographic and economic uh, contextual circumstances that so many communities, so many states, so many regions are wrestling with. Population that's no longer growing at the rate it used to grow at, economies that uh, are uh, changing faster than sometimes we can plan for. And in that context, what we've endeavored to do, and with su the support of, of you, the Planning Commission, Steering Committee, City Staff, have developed uh, something along the lines of a, perhaps a, you might think of it as a flexible decision-making guide so that when circumstances change, it allows you as a community to flex to those circumstances. That's a, that's a fairly remarkable achievement. And so while there are, there are communities in uh, the South, the Sun Belt, and the Far West that, are, that continue to expand and aren't quite in the position that, uh, that Waynesboro, that many cities in Virginia, the Carolinas are, are wrestling with, old textile communities, for instance, uh, uh, they will eventually. And so you are, uh, as, a, as a community, wrestling with circumstances that other communities will eventually have to come to terms with. Uh, I, I want to uh, thank you, Mayor, and, and thank the City Manager, Mike Ham, for, for really helping me, helping my staff and my team uh, better understand this community, understand uh, the, the fiscal situation, uh, the, the history, the, the, the culture of the community as the year has unfolded, and I appreciate that. And, and before I go into the slides, I want to say that after 28 years in the planning profession, uh, it's, it, it, it's wor it, it is worth pausing to single out your staff. Uh, cities 15, 20, 25 times the size of this city don't tend to have the, the committed, le the level of commitment and the level of expertise that you have here at city staff. Uh, from public works to parks to city manager to planning director, it's the chief, the Dr. Castle, across the board, this is, a, this is a, just an incredible community of, of supported by a, a very talented city staff. I, I just wanna make a note of that. Let's see if I can get these to work, okay. So what I'll try to do is just give a high level fly through of the, the plan. Many of you have seen pieces of it. So this is a draft, it's for your consideration, right? Uh, as Jim Shaw had pointed out, it's a, it's a non-binding document. It is what you, you choose to make of it and what the community chooses to make of it. It's a flexible decision-making tool. We've intentionally crafted this document so that it is not prescriptive. It's, it allows you to work within a, a framework and a, as circumstances change, it allows you to amend it with, with we think, ease. Uh, so you don't have to wait 10 years to, to make substantive changes. If you feel it needs a change, you jump right in and do so. The document organization, uh, that we felt allowed you flexibility uh, has some key pieces. One, a foundation. That foundation is comprised of three elements. The baseline conditions, which is where you are now. Uh, your core values, which is what you told us in listening sessions last summer, uh, uh, is the essential character of this community. And planning principles, good planning principles that will help you make decisions, right? So that's the foundation. The next part of the plan is what we call the big things, which is to say uh, you, may, you may have 
8, 10, 12, and indeed perhaps even more challenges on the horizon. But there are some parts, some, some aspects of life in Waynesboro that demand more attention than others. Those are the big things. It's imperative that you get those right. So we'll talk about that a bit. And then goals and projects, which is uh, the, 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 the goals and objectives you have and the projects that we recommend and uh, you consider investing in to help you get those big things right. So that's the layout. And uh, let's, let's go through it a little bit. We think you're at a crossroads. We think uh, the d your, your demographic situation, the, re the, the, uh, the nature of the economy here in the Valley, uh, the pace of change in Virginia puts you at a critical crossroads. We think you have a lot of assets to work with and, and uh, this is an outstanding time for you to seize that, uh, initiate a fairly robust uh, level of investment and recommitment to your own future. And, and this plan it recognizes that crossroads and uh, goes in that direction of a fairly robust set of self reinvestment. It's predicated on, on three pieces in our view. Uh, the imperative of catching up, the, uh, the obvious to keep up, uh, and the importance of getting ahead. One, one finding that we came across early in the project was that uh, for a variety of, of very understandable reasons, changes in the economy, uh, uh, some businesses coming and going, uh, the capacity to keep up with levels of maintenance in public and private property has been challenged over, over, the, over the years. It's important that we not fall further behind in some key respects, so catching up is critical. That has to also occur alongside of keeping up, right? So not only do we want to bring, for instance, roads and bridges to a level that, we're ahead, that puts us ahead of a cost curve, we also want to maintain all of the rest of the city at a high level of finish. So we want to make sure that we're keeping up. But it's the third piece that I would uh, ask you to, to draw your attention to a bit now and in the coming weeks, which is your neighbors are not sitting still. They are doubling down. They are investing in infrastructure in their school systems, in public safety. They are moving their housing markets, stabilizing weaker parts of their cities and they are positioning themselves to compete, you want to be sure that they're not out-competing you. So on all your decision-making in the coming years, we want to encourage you to keep in mind these three charges, to constantly be catching up, right, until you are caught up. Once caught up, don't fall further behind, and to the best extent possible, get ahead and begin to out-compete your neighbors. So walking you through the plan, the baselines, the values, and the principles, that really is the foundation of this, this document. Uh, and, and in those baselines, we would draw your attention to, and the plan draws attention to, uh, some demographic challenges, uh, competitiveness challenges that flow from that, uh, your condition and image, education and economics, I'll come to those in a second. Your core values, the values that your community uh, expressed to us and to the steering committee over the course of the summer, uh, the just in, inherent prudence, the family-friendly uh, uh, community you are, your entrepreneurial spirit, the, the extent to which uh, you are an independent community, and the extensive pride of being here in the valley where you are, those all uh, frame who you are as a community. And then the planning principles, really good stewardship, balance, and resourcefulness. So those were what we heard last summer, and they factored into how to set a foundation for going forward in planning. So if we come back and we take a look at those baselines, I'd, I would draw your attention just to uh, uh, so something that uh, may, may provide context and framing. If you look uh, a decade ago, you will see where manufacturing is, is a fairly robust part of your uh, uh, employment base. It still is, but it has declined, and in an important respect, it has traded places with retail. That's important in a, in a couple of respects, but noticeably it's important because retail is very finicky, right? And so we don't know, no one has a crystal ball, nobody knows how durable the retail sector is today, 
And so as, it, as, as your source of revenue and source of reliance on retail goes up, so too does your risk, okay? So that's something we just wanna bring to your attention. So it provides significant revenue, but its durability is something that's very difficult to predict, all right? The other piece uh, that I wanna draw your attention to on the bottom here is over the last 30 years, there's really no getting around the fact that, that your private property has, has aged. Many of your homes have grown tired and want a fresher coat of paint and a, and a, and a newer roof. And as a consequence, your tax base is challenged a bit. Uh, the principal is a little smaller than it needs to be. The deferred maintenance is high. In fact, it's high enough that we would calculate roughly 75, 76 million dollars is, is about what it would cost to bring your residential market up to what we would call par, okay? That's a significant chunk of change. Every community in America has a deficit like that in some respect, right? What's notable is we also think that your community is sitting on 30, 35 million dollars a year, the residential community, it can't afford to reinvest in its homes that is choosing not to. So after we subtract for payments to the bank, for utilities, for taxes, right, in a truly healthy market, that additional 30, 35, 40 million dollars a year would typically be going into housing repairs, into upgrades, into second baths, into additions, right? So your housing market is deprived of, of a fair amount of discretionary in investment from residents, right? That, that's important. That keeps the tax base lower than it needs to be and it also sends powerful signals to the surrounding market. So in that respect, those are baselines on the far left that help us begin to think about, well, what do we do about that as planners? Where does that lead us? Well, it leads us, to identifying what, what we believe are your, the big things, right? The big things to pay attention to. So one is vulnerabilities, the second is standards, and the third is pride. And by vulnerabilities, we mean what puts you at risk. By standards, it's what undermines progress, and pride is essentially the signal. What are we communicating to our neighbors, right? To visitors and to our neighbors. And so if we drill down a little bit, what I wanna draw your attention to is three vulnerabilities. You have a revenue vulnerability, and that is uh, what, uh, what we talked about a moment or two earlier, which is an in a growing reliance on retail, right, as a funding source. So that's a that's a that's a it's a vulnerability. You have a you are you are inching up uh, in your poverty level. It becomes a vulnerability there as well, right? Flooding risk simply by virtue of where you are, it's a risk. Okay, so. Uh, we wanna just identify it and understand it. Standards become an important uh, second of the three uh, big things that, that we believe your plan needs to address. And, and that's principally in property, which we talked about a little bit earlier, right? Uh, and education, right? So not enough of your kids are moving through grade to grade ready for the next grade and not enough of them are coming into high school ready to thrive in high school. And then when they get into high school, it's, it's really hard to catch up, okay? So your standards both on, on your care of your property and the stewardship of, 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 of children has, has fallen behind a little bit. And pride. So pride is, a, is, is, is important both in the built environment, which you know, we, we've, we've covered now twice, but also the natural environment, right? You have a, a setting that not a single one of our clients over 28 years wouldn't you know, give their eye teeth for, right? So stewarding that setting, leveraging that setting is critical, right? So when we think about the big things and, and, and we think about these baselines and your core values and putting them all together, uh, now you begin to have a framework for where to go forward as a community plan-wise. And where this plan uh, uh, tr uh, draw, uh, focuses attention are in these five areas, education, infrastructure, neighborhoods, quality of life, and your economy. Right? And in that sense, the, 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 the plan then breaks down into a, a set of uh, activities that are tied together with goals in each of these categories. So for instance, in quality of life, the plan speaks to the issue of parks and trails, it, particularly trails, given the high 
return on investment, dollar for dollar, that you're apt to get through quality investments in trails as well as parks. On the neighborhoods front, the, your housing values are 20% lower than they could be, right? So how do we get those values stabilized and grow those property values? Safety in your community, projecting that safety across the community, across the region, so that you can compete for households that might choose to live someplace else, neighborhood quality of life, and the condition of your rental property, which needs, to, needs some attention. So those begin to be activity areas where we can set goals and focus attention. On education, we've got both classroom work to do and facility work to do, all right? So everybody understands that there, there's considerable deferred maintenance at the high school, but we've got some classroom readiness issues to, to tackle as well. On the economic front, we've done a, you've done a fabulous job of adjusting your economy the last 15 years uh, to in, in the in, uh, sort of in the shadow of economic dislocation and, and large corporate uh, decisions made that have, that have uh, left you with some vacancies. You've done outstanding work on the retail side uh, uh, along 64. A additional work is gonna, we, we believe, need to be done to enhance the value of those intersections. Museum development needs to be accelerated. Some flooding analysis needs to occur. We think your downtown is uh, is not yet optimized and, and additional analysis will help you get closer to that. You've got a world-class asset in the Crozet Tunnel. You wanna connect to that. There are important revenue shifts that the plan asks you to consider. For instance, right now, you've got uh, a, a substantial reliance on, on, on meals tax, sales tax, and a different kind of a reliance on uh, residential property tax. So thinking carefully about how to optimize those are discussed in the plan. Your infrastructure, you actually do a, 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 a wonderful job of maintaining roads and bridges. We wanna keep up the excellent level of stewardship there. But we want to, in this plan, encourage not just the functional achievements of, of infrastructure uh, stewardship, but the aesthetic uh, opportunities uh, that, that upgrading your infrastructure presents. Um, and so the plan speaks to that and then moves into the issue of tree canopy and, and, and uh, expanding your tree canopy and <coughs> adopting and implementing uh, a sidewalk plan that's been on the shelf for a bit and it's now time to put that into place. So when we walk through those broad strokes and we sort of say, how do we do that? Well, from an education point of view, our, our view is y you're gonna have to compete for the best teachers in the region. And in order to compete for the best teachers in the region, a best in Valley Teacher Compensation Program or some equivalence of that will be necessary. You're not likely to, com to retain, much less recruit the very best teachers unless the compensation package uh, uh, is, is, is at a place capable of doing that. Repairs to the high school uh, require attention. Investments in school readiness require attention and we would encourage over the next several years to, that uh, council, the community, school board begin to re-examine boundary catchment areas for the different schools. In terms of activities on the economic front, the industrial park is an important marker for future growth for the city, so we want to recommend that the pump station get installed, that you uh, stay current and, and have, have the industrial park ready uh, so that uh, should an opportunity present itself, you, you can jump on that. The Natural History Museum probably needs a forward commitment to accelerate it and move it on the pipeline. That's something we would encourage you to consider. Connection uh, to the Crozet Tunnel <coughs> is not something to put off for too long. It's part of uh, your ultimate investment in quality of life, the parks and trails package that we think you'll need to compete in the region. Your downtown businesses, right now, the, the vacancy rates aren't, are, are too high. Uh, the capacity for uh, the community to provide financing assistance for business expansion and development downtown is a fraction of what it needs to be. That's a, that's a place where we would strongly encourage you to consider investments. Uh, we, we talked through the analysis of downtown flooding risk. On quality of life, uh, you've got parks that are uh, 
ready to go in the, in the pipeline. So com completing the Constitution Park uh, is something that uh, is at the top of the list, but we want to encourage council to invest at the highest level you can see fit to do at. So to move well beyond a functional investment and to begin putting, uh, uh, putting investments into your park and trail system that puts you on par with your surrounding uh, uh, Blue Ridge Parkway level of uh, aesthetic finish. You want the same level of finish to Sunset Park. You wanna continue that to Basic and to Ridgeview uh, so that you really are setting a standard uh, across the board. The theme that, that you wanna see between the lines in all of this that, that we would really have to bring to your attention is for a long time we don't think that you have invested in yourselves at the, at the level necessary to compete and thrive in a very competitive region in the next 15 and 20 years. So you're gonna need to invest more robustly in education, more robustly in, uh, the, in the aesthetics of your community so that the finish on your community communicates to this region that you care enough to do so. At present, one of your great risks is that you are not competing well enough for the middle class who has so many choices, so many excellent <coughs> choices in this region that they are too frequently choosing to invest elsewhere, to <coughs> buy and, and plant roots elsewhere. In order to compete more successfully there, you're gonna have to raise your game. And so the common theme in all of this is classrooms, cl uh, uh, classroom readiness, facilities, parks, trails, roads, infrastructure, public safety, everything's gonna have to come up a notch, right? So when it comes to implementation, let me, let me come back for a second. All of these items carry fairly heavy price tags. Our, our counsel to you is, is be very careful about, not, about choosing to not invest in these recommendations. Our analysis is that you are at a precarious place in your economic history. Your competition, whether it's Stanton or Lynchburg or Harrisburg, everybody's raising their game, you're gonna have to as well. Right? So this is not the time to try to go too light. Right? And so as you begin to make choices about where to put your inve investments, be mindful that every, every th there is a penny wise pound foolish rule that will be in place as you go forward. Okay? So every, every opportunity that you miss to invest, you can rest assured your competition will be taking the opposite approach. Okay? So on implementation, we would encourage you to pass a tandem consistency policy. So two weeks from now, three weeks from now, when you are considering the comprehensive plan, we would suggest that you write a tandem consistency policy or require that any decision that you make in the future, right, have a, a rider attached to it, which, which basically says, is, is what is being proposed consistent with the comprehensive plan? And if it's not, you either need to amend the plan or not pass what, what you're considering, right? So this is because the comprehensive plan is a voluntary document. It will be very easy to not implement. It's a way to hold yourselves accountable. So that it, it, that's a, it's, a, it's a fairly strong recommendation we make on that front, okay? So, so let me reiterate that. If you, Planning Commission has recommended your adoption. If you choose to adopt it and then choose to not fund it, you are effectively not implementing it. By passing a tandem consistency policy, you are holding yourselves accountable to implement what it is you adopt, okay? So there is a secret sauce to this. You have to invest in the excellent staff you have. You are also short-staffed. 
in almost every department. So you're, so staff is going to have to both grow in size and stay stay at a high level of quality. You have to make it your business to outcompete your neighbors, because right now they are ahead of you, right? What you measure is what you get. So the metrics that are contained in the report, we would encourage you to pay close attention to those metrics, right? Make sure that your decisions are consistent with the plan. We would encourage you to amend the plan regularly, right? If a year down the line, two years down the line, it's not serving you in a key respect, we would encourage you with existing staff to amend it, right? And we would, exist, we would also encourage you to impanel your steering committee as an advisory body to stay with you throughout uh, until there's a complete rehaul, uh, overhaul of, the ex of, the, of this plan if, it, if adopted so that you've got a relationship with, with those who put time into thinking through what would constitute goals, what would constitute activities, what were the planning principles, what did we hear the community voice last summer, how did this plan you know, uh, move from a concept to, to a document, all right? I'll take any questions. We got any questions? I would like to know <clears throat> your staff and yourself, if we were to, let's say, uh, get up to so-called par with some of our uh, neighbors that we need to do, what kind of tax increase would that entail? I'd have to get back to you. If, if you're asking about what, how much of a millage we would have to adjust on, I'd have to get back with you on that. Because I agree with a lot you're saying, and I appreciate your, your efforts. Um, and I'm pleased in here listening to some of the things that we're already in that mode, moving ahead, Sunset Park and the high school, and some of the things you mentioned, Industrial Park. And I was just curious, um, anyone in this room can go to any city in the country and point out things that need to be changed. And I just want to know, what do you, what is your group decided would be a good way for us to start with some of the implementation we have here? We, we're excited about, about where you are on Sunset Park, right? We're excited about where you are in Constitution Park and 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 pre-existing plans for for further developing your trail network, right? We absolutely would would strongly encourage you to follow through on all of those fronts at the highest level you can possibly conceive. We would strongly encourage you to extend out to Crozet, right? So on that front, you are right away beginning to. Uh, communicate to residents here that quality of life is going to go up. You're also communicating to the surrounding region that uh, you're in it for the long haul. This place matters. Quality of life matters, right? And it puts you in a position to compete. That's that's a that's a big piece of it. You have, in parallel fashion. You've got slipping standards on too many blocks and too many too many properties, and you're going to have to raise. You're going to have to set a firm floor, right? You're going to have to. Your code enforcement is going to require attention. Okay, you you've looked the other way for too long while too many landlords treated their property and their tenants too shabbily, right? So you're going to have to put a, a nail in that coffin, right? That's going to have to happen in parallel fashion. Uh, Downtown, you've done miraculous things with a small amount of money. It's time to put a little bit more money there so that you can actually get a center of gravity downtown. I think that those are three things, absolutely. Now, a pickle you're in is the high school requires attention. And it requires so much attention that you might not be able to do anything else if you just did the high school. So it's critical that it get on your list but probably not tomorrow. Probably a better idea from our point of view to aggressively save, to tackle it robustly in three, four, five, or six years, 
in parallel fashion to the, you know, parallel to the, to the other work. I think when the surrounding, when the, when the valley gets a sense that you're setting a firm floor and standards for real estate, you're beginning to invest in quality of life, and they begin to get a sense that there is a plan for addressing some of the educational uh, challenges you, you've got, that's a strong signal. Um, and, 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 and it's a signal people will pay attention to. I would absolutely do that. I mean, you're short in other areas. The chief needs a few more officers. There's, you know, there's, it's a, there are a number of areas where, where, where work is required. You're gonna have to make some, some, some tough choices. Uh, but you're at a position now where actually the, you've got good revenue coming in on the retail side. So much, much it's not the trick, but much of the, that is making a decision on how to use it. So yeah, I would, it, this, this, to summarize, continue doing some of what you're doing, but raise your game as you're doing it. Does that, does that respond? Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? Any questions? Charles, thank thanks. You, thanks, Mayor. I, I would just I would just offer that I, I really have appreciated the process, and um, I think uh, it's, uh, it's certainly the, a conversation that our, our community um, as needed, and um, and I think it's uh, been delivered in a way that um, I tell folks all the time that I think it's uh, honest, um, uh, but inspired at the same time. So, um, and I hope that uh, that we can uh, move forward in that direction. So, thank you. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Item five is to consider adopting a resolution for Sunset Park Recreational Access Road funding. Mr. Shaw. Mr. Mayor, members of council, very timely request here. Um, <laughs> as you're well aware of the project um, we've been pursuing at Sunset Park, um, one of the strategies for funding is to request uh, recreational access funding from the Virginia Department of Transportation to build the road um, from um, North Delphine up to the Overlook. The program that VDOT has will provide up to $250,000 of unmatched funds and then an additional $100,000 uh, of funds with a dollar for dollar match. So in other words, that you, we could ask for as much as $450,000 and that we would be contributing 100,000 of that. Right now, the road estimate is at $355,000. So if we request that, then our obligation under the program would be a bit more than $50,000. So with that, uh, we've provided uh, the necessary resolution to make request of the Commonwealth Transportation Board, and we would encourage its adoption and we'll send it down to Richmond. Thank you, Mr. Shaw. Is there any questions, Mr. Shaw? Not is there a motion to adopt the resolution? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Marks. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Freeman. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries 5 0. Item 5B is to consider adopting a resolution ratifying the City Council values and vision statement. Mr. Hamm. Mayor Allen, members of the council, um, I'm going to call a 30-second time out here and ask Mr. Jude, do we have the slides for this on the, thank you. So this uh, also, like the preceding item, is fitting uh, for council's consideration. Um, you'll no doubt recall that <coughs> we spent some time together in December as a group, as a team, uh, the council and members of the executive staff to consider um, some practical issues, um, some team building exercises, and um, develop and consider a statement of vision and values uh, for the city council. Um, statements like this are important and um, oftentimes powerful expressions in that they signal um, to the staff, um, to your city manager, um, to the community, to potential investors and stakeholders, um, who it is that the council believes um, that we are as an organization, um, that we are as a community, and where we're headed and how we might contemplate uh, pursuing them. To a certain extent, it's similar in objective to a comprehensive plan, but far, for, 
far for far more at a higher level and a higher plane of uh, conversation and expression, but equally important. So as a vision statement, um, I'll give you a second to take a look at that. I think uh, it reflects um, something that Mr. Buki acknowledged that perhaps um, you know, I am, um, perhaps members of the staff, perhaps the entire community to some extent have become a little guilty of taking for granted um, our proximity and the value um, that we enjoy, the blessing, the good fortune that we have uh, in our geographic location in the Shenandoah Valley and some of the park assets and other natural assets that we have. For years, we have mentioned um, this theme in passing, but um, in my honest assessment, we've never quite uh, mastered the ability to capture um, that advantage and uh, build on it in our messaging and in our action as a staff. And so um, perhaps it's not surprising that we come back to the theme of um, our vision being so closely tied to our um, enjoyment of uh, favorable natural beauty and position in the Commonwealth. I think what, what you should try to do as a community and as an organization is capture an expression um, that distinguishes you, again, extending the theme of competition, distinguishes you from um, other localities in the area, folks that um, with whom you will compete for residents and businesses and events and investment. And I think this vision expression um, developed by the council does that. Value statement number one speaks to quality of life. Um, it's not unusual that elected bodies and staffs um, consider um, their position and um, what they have to do to ensure a uh, favorable future for itself and residents um, mention quite conspicuously the quality of life. And I think this statement, um, again, you can see um, the theme of uh, competitiveness, the, the, a lifestyle, a community lifestyle that is the envy among localities in the region. Um, you'll recall that in our work together, we kind of worked with the ch word choice there and it does express the notion of competing among other localities and um, trying to establish a standard that uh, will be preferred um, to other localities. Community prosperity, um, whatever our, our aspirations are, um, our maintenance needs, our um, quality improvement needs, um, we won't accomplish much um, if we're not healthy from an economic um, standpoint. If the community is not prosperous, if our um, community organizations and businesses aren't thriving, if our families aren't thriving, if individuals aren't thriving. And so this is um, perhaps a required nod um, to what many, many, if not all cities and counties are thinking about is how do you create an environment where your businesses uh, will want to invest, where they'll want to stay, where they'll want to grow and create uh, prosperity both at a corporate level and at a household level. And um, so uh, council, I think, um, necessarily acknowledges that and that expression um, should not be taken for granted. You'll see also some themes that begin to emerge of uh, quality and um, cost associated with that quality. You'll recall that um, we did this work as work on the draft comprehensive plan was wrapping up and so you'll see um, again themes, common themes emerging, community pride. Um, I think we're looking at a basketball gym, and I can recall um, as a team running wind sprints at the end of a practice, and if one person starts to slow up, the whole group starts to slow up, and you get sort of this group, um, a declining group performance, a declining group accepted standard, and, um, and by the same token, if somebody wants to pull the group forward by um, demonstrating a little extra effort, um, that individual can lead in that regard and oftentimes they'll elevate the performance or the standard for the entire team or group. And I think that may be the case here. I think um, Mr. Buki has identified we have adequate financial capacity in the community. Um, perhaps we've been uh, become a little complacent in some areas 
with our um, with the personal standard of maintenance and investment and general pride. Um, I'm a native of Waynesboro. I've been here my entire professional career. I don't think um, our our community suffers from any affliction in the regard of pride. I think we're a, pri a prideful or a proud people. Um, but I think perhaps in certain areas, we've just become a little under motivated in demonstrating that pride. And so that theme um, emerged in our work. Level of service, I think that um, again, quality, uh, we've been pressed or will be pressed in the coming weeks to consider the quality of the work that we do, the service that we deliver, um, the quality of our stewardship of natural resources in the community. Um, but we know too that in Waynesboro, um, stewardship from a financial standpoint is important. And so I think, um, I think this should speak um, to me as a manager, it should speak to the municipal staff and it should speak also to the community that um, we want to set an appropriate measure of quality for service and program delivery, um, but we also want to measure that and provide an excellent value against the taxes and fees that are assessed to deliver that service. And I think the important, um, um, you have an important merging there of fiscal stewardship um, and quality. And so what that says is, I think we'll be pushed as an organization and challenged as a community to make sure that our amenities, our facilities, our features are of sufficient quality to compete. But <clears throat> I don't think that we'll ever be known as um, on the forefront of cutting edge technology, um, the emerging technology, flashingness, extravagance, um, ease. We'll have to work hard and um, <coughs> deliver good value and good quality and an appropriate measure of resource, reminding us that whatever resource we have available as a municipal organization, it comes from residents and businesses who pay various fees and taxes. So I think that's a key, key statement about um, our identity as a group and um, probably um, emerges not just from a unique um, social or political or economic perspective from this room or this council, but also um, from a variety of factors of um, um, independent self-reliance, um, work ethic, um, stewardship that uh, has been characteristic of the entire Shenandoah Valley for many years. Problem solving, and this is a companion to the previous one. I don't think um, we should expect that money in and of itself will solve our problems or move us forward in the manner that we wish um, in and of itself, that we will have to uh, rely on staff who have been um, appropriately identified as um, talented and knowledgeable and motivated this evening, um, but it will take financial resource and creative um, entrepreneurial um, effort on the part of your municipal staff um, to solve problems. And I might point out too, that not all the problems or challenges that the community faces presently um, should land in the lap of the municipal government, that there are responsibilities that um, nonprofits in the community can address, uh, churches, uh, businesses, civic clubs, um, really to enjoy the success that Mr. Buki um, expressed tonight and that the plan articulates, it really needs to be a comprehensive and community effort. Um, but certainly the municipal government has chief responsibility in certain core areas. And that is uh, the vision statement and the value statement, or those are the vision statement and value statements that emerged from our retreat in December. Um, we've furnished a resolution by which the council can formally adopt that work. Um, if you're not prepared to do that tonight, um, you can certainly um, direct staff to bring this item back um, for formal consideration at a subsequent meeting. Any questions or statements you'd like to make right now? I do have a question, Mr. Bukey, um halfway had us on the back for our sales tax. <clears throat> Should we be concerned? I'd rather have us answer my own staff. I, I was asked a question even as, as recently as today that should our citizens be uh, alarmed by the fact that they saw in the news that our sales were down compared to some of our neighbors? Are we 
Are we interested in that? So I, I would say from a staff standpoint, and I think we probably watch that um, as closely as anybody in the community, um, it's not news about which to be alarmed. I think it's news of which to be aware. And I think as we've, um, we're continuing a work on developing a recommended budget for FY19, and I think we've come to the conclusion that perhaps we've reached our plateau, plateau at least in the current um, frame of time, about sales tax. And there are certainly, um, I don't think there was any expectation that it would continue to increase um, indefinitely. But I think you can read, if you follow general news or financial news, that retail investment is changing across the country, and that's probably having some impact. And as Mr. Buki pointed out, it's very susceptible to even um, fl mild fluctuations in an economy. It's just simply not as stable as property and uh, taxes of that nature. So a more short answer is it's too soon, I think, to be alarmed but you should be aware and be cognizant of that fact um, as you think about this budget and future budgets. Okay, and is restaurant fees included in that? Um, it's, it's, well, it can be depending on how you um, talk about the term sales tax. In this case, I think the f analysis and comment applies exclusively um, to sales tax, not the um, meals tax. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I, I would just uh, add, I, I think, I think um, staff's done a, an excellent job of capturing the, uh, the tone and conversation that we had at, at the retreat. Um, and I'm, I'm reminded of uh, one of the, the, the comments that came up through the, through the consultants, through the conference of planning process of, of values. And, and so if we all think about the values of our city, uh, strong education, strong tourism, looking out for each other, strong neighborhoods that we care. The question that I got out, that I got, that, that was pivoted back to the group was, how do we show it? It's one thing to talk about your values, but what are the ways that we show it? And I think um, I found that inspired, and I think that this is a, 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 an absolutely fantastic way to, to continue that conversation in our community about choices. You know, a community of 22,000 can only do so much, um, and so we've 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 got to have uh, practical choices as we move forward. I think um, I would offer just my own personal take on on tax rate versus value rates. It's, it's less to do about the tax rate, and it's more about to do with value, right? So if we're making if we're, if if revenue is coming in and we're making investments, that creates value for all of us and all of our properties and businesses. That's a probably pretty good return on investment. So it's, again, less to do about the tax rate and more about value and, and adding value to all the, all, everything that we do from our civic groups to, to uh, the businesses that we um, uh, frequent and restaurants that we dine in. There's lots of good restaurants in downtown Waynesboro too if you, if you guys are hungry afterwards. But that's all I have. Thank you. One of the uh, articles in the, the Virginia Municipal League magazine that just arrived it talks about uh, municipalities uh, across the nation, but across Virginia too, still focusing on where we're at from 2008 in the recession. And so how would staff compare us to other localities as to have we completed, completely gotten out of the recession? Are we 75 percent? Uh, how do we fare? You know, that probably goes into everything else we're talking about. Um. I think that's a, I mean, that's a good question. And um, as statistics go, what I would say is that we certainly have not returned to the development, uh, pre-recession development boom. And that's probably uh, to be expected that, you know, the kind of growth that we were seeing in the early to mid 2000s was really pretty extraordinary and exceptional for you know our community and for the region as a whole. So when you look at things like the number of building permits issued, the type of developments, commercial developments that we see, um, we've seen certainly that we're ticking back up. There are you know, houses going up in most of the, the major subdivisions, and we've continued to see um, you know, a lot of 
properties be refurbished in the commercial areas. So, you know, I think we're seeing some forward progress from where we were in, say, 2010. Um, sales tax, meals tax revenues, you know, were, were climbing at a pretty healthy clip post-2010. Now, the article that Mr. Freeman refers to um, was picked up, and we, we had started to see even last year in fiscal year 17 that the, the sales tax had, at least for the time being, hit something of a, a ceiling. Meals tax actually has continued to climb. Lodging uh, receipts have continued to climb. And those, those types of receipts are much healthier uh, than they were coming out of 2010, 2011. So I think there, you know, I'm not an economist and it's, it's hard for me to say, oh yeah, we've, you know, we're, we're in a healthy recovery, but the, the types of indicators that we look at as local administrators would say, well, we're making <coughs> progress but certainly we don't see the robust expansion we saw prior to the recession and we probably, I don't think anybody predicts we will anytime soon. I think we see property values as getting just incrementally better. I mean that, you know, you see a percent, two percent, we'll go through a reassessment year coming up and we'll see where we are, but you know, in the last couple of reassessments, what you see in housing and commercial sales wouldn't lead us to believe that there's been, you know, a really rapid expansion in values there. Um, so it's m maybe a lot of what people say about the national economy is, yes, we're recovering, we're no longer in recession because there is an expanding economy, but um, to be blunt, it's not something we're getting, we're giddy about. You know, we, we just, we're cautiously optimistic. I don't see that our revenues I don't, don't want to give away too much about the upcoming budget, but the, the revenues of the city aren't naturally growing at a very rapid pace. And in the past, too, haven't we been very conservative on how we set uh, what we thought we would uh, receive in sales tax and retail tax? I think we always have been, yes. In, in the years that I've you know, worked with the, the budget group here uh, over a couple of different finance directors, um, I think we've set a pretty conservative, you know, standard for projecting revenue. And I, I would just offer to you that I think the other sort of uh, um, element here that that's that's concerning is uh, at, a, at, a, at a national level. I mean, we, we all had brown boxes arrive at Christmas time at our doorsteps. I mean, let's just be honest, right? And so uh, there there are consequences to that. Do you? purchase something off of Amazon, there's a probably pretty good chance that you're not, we're not collecting that sales tax revenue. So, um, you know, there's a, the Supreme Court is actually taking up uh, the, the, the matter of, of local tax and state tax, um, actually this su spring, I think, spring or early summer, and I uh, would hope that, but it really is, um, this is, this is a byproduct of the convenience of shopping online. Uh, it's not like people are, are you know, Disposable income is going up, not down. Um, so they're buying it, just we're all buying it, but buying it from folks that, um, unfortunately, it actually undermines ourselves, so. Thank you. Is there a motion to adopt the visions and value statements? So moved. Thank you, is there a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Carries 5-0. Item six is to consider approving an application from the Wayne Theater to close a portion of Main Street for the sale and consumption of alcohol beverage in the city, on city property on Saturday, April the 7th, 2018, from 6 p.m. until 12 a.m. during the Wayne Theater's Grand Gala. Mr. Hamm. Mayor Allen and members of council, the Wayne Theater organization is um, holding this as a fundraising event and they've approached the city or requested from the city, as you've indicated, um, the ability to close Main Street between Wayne Avenue and Church Street from 6 p.m. until um, midnight and then also uh, sale and consumption on public um, property. I think that will largely simply facilitate the ability of attendees to move from um, what I understand will be sort of a party or a buffet tent 
on private property on the south side of Main Street, across Main Street into the theater for various portions of evening events. Be my recommendation that the council approve this request. Any questions of Mr. Hamp? Is there a motion to approve the request? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Freeman. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries 5-0. Item 6B is to consider approving an application from the Shenandoah Valley Art Center to allow the closure of certain streets and the sale of consumption of alcohol beverages on city property on Saturday, October the 13th from 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. and Sunday, October the 14th, 2018 from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. during the fall foliage art show. Mr. Hamp. Unless there are questions, this is the annual fall foliage art show request. Are there any questions? Is there a motion to approve the request? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Freeman. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries 5-0. Item 7A is to consider introducing an ordinance appropriating $13,803 of state and federal asset forfeiture funds for transfer to the equipment fund for the purchase of a used vehicle for detective division for the police department. Mr. Ham. So Mayor Allen, you love it when I do this. I'm gonna change the, the plan a little bit. I'm gonna talk about 7A and 7B together and then the council can consider um, introduction of those separate ordinances, but the two are related. So what we're endeavoring to accomplish here is the appropriation first of um, $13,803 of state and federal asset forfeiture funds. These are um, resources, financial resources that come to the police department by virtue of drug interdiction work. Um, that ordinance will be paired with a, an appropriation ordinance that appropriates $6,000 from the police department operating budget um, to the fleet fund. And the two amounts combined will fund um, the purchase of a used vehicle um, for the detectives division or the investigations division in the department. Um, that will replace a vehicle that will be transferred to a, the canine officer replacing ultimately a 2008 Crown Victoria with 130,000 miles on it. Thank you, Mr. Hamm. Mm -hmm. So in reference to 7A and the $13,803, are there any other questions of Mr. Hamm? The budgeted amount out of uh, the FY18, um, where we had had an apportionment of, of funds set aside into a reserve for um, equipment purchases in the equipment fund, does this 13,803 um, provide unanticipated revenue? Yes, so this is newly appropriated revenue to the current operating budget. So conceivably that 13,803 could then be assigned into um, um, a uh, un unassigned. No, not I would say not the thirteen eight zero three because that's asset forfeiture. That's no, I don't mean I don't, I don't mean that. But I mean out of the uh, in terms of if we're adding another thirteen thousand eight zero three into the equipment fund that we had already budgeted in the and 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 there we could move the thirteen that we had previously allocated into and have this replace those funds. I'm not saying. Well, we've spent, spent that money. money. That, the, the original appropriation in the 18 budget is either has been spent or is in the process of being spent. So this contemplates the purchase of a car that we did not anticipate not. buying okay. as of July 1st. Understood. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That was the missing ingredient. There. Yep. I'm sorry. <laughs> a hard way to get there. It was a hard way to get around my elbow. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Is there a motion to introduce the ordinance for the $13,803? So moved. Thank you. This ordinance and other uh, presented tonight will be considered at the March 12th regular meeting. Item 7B is the $6,000 he was talking about taking out of the equipment fund. So is there any questions of Mr. Hamp of that? If not, is there a motion to introduce? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. Item 7C is to consider introducing an ordinance appropriating 7,500 from the Economic Development Committed Reserve account to the <laughs> general fund for website redesign costs for the Economic Development website, Mr. Hamp. 
Mayor Allen and members of council, having a well-designed internet web presence is um, a very effective, if not the most effective, economic development marketing technique um, to reach companies of all sizes and site location consultants. Um, our present website was established in 2012, um, the URL of waynesboroughbusiness.com, and that is provides, that's our main economic development um, information website. Um, since the launch, the site has continually been updated with content, but the basic graphic design and site map and overall look has remained the same. In order to maintain market presence and update the look for functionality of the site, a redesign is necessary. And, you know, we're, at, so this would be, we're about six months into the existing website um, look, so to speak. Um, at the same time, the staff has been notified that our current vendor is changing the platform for all of its managed sites and um, we'll be changing the common and easy to work with, changing to uh, the common and easy to work with WordPress platform. Um, to facilitate the change, the vendor has offered a very reasonable cost redesign and to migrate our current site into the platform. Um, staff has evaluated the options of this offer compared to a completely new design with a new, um, with other vendors to determine that this is the most cost and time efficient option. There's a one-time fee of $7,500 to accomplish the change. Um, a beneficial financial note is that our current annual hosting fee, um, which is $3,600, will be reduced to $1,400. So in summary, this change is necessitated by our current vendor. It probably coincides with a need to um, refresh the look of our site um, in any case, and um, we'll be reducing annual uh, maintenance and hosting expenses associated with the site. The appropriation ordinance um, contemplates taking the $7,500 from the Economic Development Reserve. Thank you, Mr. Hamp. When we uh, first set our website up in 2012, does anybody know what the cost was for that? About $30,000, $35 maybe. And do we know what the cost would be if we decided to go with a new one and not update this one but just you said there this was a lot more cheaper but do we know what that cost was I, I don't think we got to the point of bidding it i think there was a survey of the market of generally what what do you cost what do you charge to redesign and it was exceeded seven thousand five hundred mr hitchin is present tonight and might have um, more complete <coughs> or specific answers to your question if come up to the podium please so people at home could hear you mr hitchin come forward please mr hitchin <laughs> Yes, sir. Uh, the quick answer is it would be the same as um, our first website in a neighborhood of $30,000. Okay. Thank you, sir. But any other questions? Is this a local vendor out of curiosity? Uh, I'm not sure. Local vendor? It's not a local vendor. It's a vendor that does uh, community and economic, de economic development websites. It's their specialty. They're not, they are not local. Thank you, sir. Is there a motion to introduce? So moved. Thank you. Short. Item 7D is to consider introducing an ordinance appropriating 13,000 from the Economic Development Committed Reserve account to the general fund for a redesign cost related to the tourism visit guide. Mr. Hamp. This is a visual aid. This is the tourism uh, visitor's guide. Um, the last printing of this uh, was 2012 also, and since that time we've um, distributed 80,000 editions, uh, or 80,000 guides in two separate editions. The second edition was updated and printed in 2015, and we're approaching the end of that inventory. Um, since both the consumer marketing techniques and Waynesboro have undergone some significant changes in the time, staff is currently redesigning in the guide and format and to meet consumer changes by increasing content, adding visuals, and organizing the content by topic. Um, this also um, we recommend by funding through the Economic Development Reserve in the amount of $13,000. Um, we anticipate that the design would be completed and ready to print by March 15th in order to have the supply by the spring tourist season. Um, if you have specific questions, I think Mr. Hitchin can respond to those. Any questions? <coughs> if not, is our motion to introduce? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Marks. Item eight is to consider making an appointment to the Disability and Aging Board for Independence. Mr. Hamp. 
Mr. Gary Ladone has submitted his name um, and candidacy for consideration uh, for appointment to the Disability and Aging Board for Independence. Thank you. Are there any uh, questions about a motion for Mr. Ladone? Or is, is there a motion to appoint Mr. Ladone? Make that motion. Thank you. Are there any questions? Any is there a second to it? Second. And all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries 5-0. Item nine is communications, correspondence, and calendar. I don't have anything this evening, sir. Thank you. <coughs> and citizens comment period time. No one has signed up to speak. Right. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. And we are adjourned. Thank you. We all